What is up guys? Welcome to a brand new video. If you didn't see my last video, just last week we were out at Sebring Raceway out with Old Vader for the very first time. Um, everything was going good until it did it. Um, had an off on the track. I assumed maybe just got some lip damage, some cosmetic damage, but as I pulled the car off track and kind of back, got back into the pits, uh, we found some cooling on the ground um, and we found some questionable items around the lower radiator support that we were like, the car is not going to go back out on track the way it is. I don't want to risk myself and I don't want to risk the safety of any other driver that's maybe in front of me or behind me. So I got the car back here. It's been about a week. I haven't really touched it. It's just been sitting here. Um, and we're going to take it apart, figure out what's, what's all wrong with it, what we got to buy to replace and how quickly we can get it back out on track because I am feeling more and more comfortable with the car. I'm more and more excited about driving um, and learning my limits. But first, I got to repair the damage I caused. So let's get started. So one of the downsides of kind of having my home gym here in the garage is that every time I walk out here to get a little workout in or something, I end up tinkering with the car. So initially when we slid off, when I slid off track, right, the only impacting components are going to be the lower part of the car. My front lip was completely disintegrated. Um, and obviously we said we saw a coolant leak. So initially we did a lot of observation under the car to assume, you know, potentially assuming that there was some sort of uh, impact that might've caused either a radiator hose to come loose or get damaged or potentially worse, the radiator itself uh, get cracked. Now that's still a possibility, but we really didn't assess the top of the car because we didn't, tip, we didn't assume that anything would occur up on the top end of the car. As I was out here this past week, um, I kind of just, I have been doing some other research about a separate video we can make, which is the fact that on track, my back bumper is being covered in soot. And we had a couple theories and I spoke to a couple different of my vendors that have provided some parts for this to try to isolate what might be causing it. But that's again, that's another video there. Um, and as I started tugging, I found this hose, this hose, and this hose, you might not see this one over here, all broken loose. The reason why we didn't notice this on the track was because this hose in my hand runs right beneath this carbon fiber, the Super B lines carbon fibers intake cover, um, and it connects to this hose on this side. And naturally these cars bring this little plastic T. Um, I'll record in a separate clip so you can see it, this little plastic T. And this is a 2009, these cars get old, these things start to become brittle uh, with the Florida heat and obviously the hot and cold temperatures that it experiences with coolant flowing through it. Um, and they get brittle. So this is what snapped. And right now I'm a little optimistic that this might be the only problem that caused my coolant to leak out. Um, not coolant actually, I keep referencing coolant, but I actually run water in this car, but caused the coolant to leak out through here. Cause definitely this is, this is broken. Um, to correct this, right? I can either look for this factory plastic piece, uh, but I've decided to go with a brass T fitting um, that way it can support a bit more of the hot and cold environments that it experiences, more of the hot side, because I live in Florida. Um, so we're gonna replace that. But before I start worrying about replacing this, I'm gonna take my intake cover off so I can visibly see the radiator properly. I'm gonna get the car up in the air because we did notice that the radiator support at the bottom end, the lower radiator support was loose. So we're gonna take a look at that. I have a, fact, I have a replacement radiator support here. Uh, but this is this is the first thing we found when the car got back home So definitely this was leaking coolant because this does tap into your overflow tank You have a steam port here on the cylinder head and then I'm, and this part connects back to the radiator so the overflow tank can flow back and forth so Definitely this was a culprit to my coolant leak that I found but we're gonna make sure that there's no other damage um, on the bottom half of the car or in fact that the radiator is not damaged itself Take uh, was already kind of loose. I had started taking it apart, like I said, for, for something else that I'm diagnosing with the car at the same time. And I decided, uh, I pulled the intake out. It's clear the radiator's just kind of slouching right now, even though these are kind of in that diagonal uh, direction, but it, it's completely loose. So I'm gonna jack the car up um, and check out that radi the lower radiator support. My good friend Phelps Garage was the one that was under the car when he said that that radiator support might be damaged. 
Um, I believe from the images I saw, it might just be bolts. So let's see if I can uh, identify what he saw and uh, see if I can replace it because it definitely everything is kind of slouching. So while I'm there, I'm gonna replace that and the radiator is absolutely disgusting. Now I had noticed that previously, obviously I've had this car for about six months, maybe a little bit longer now uh, from the previous owner that was pretty dirty. Um, and the intake filter is very, very similar. So I'm gonna try my best to clean these things out, um, get it filled back with water and see how it drives, see if it you know, maintains temp and stuff. But first we gotta get it up off the ground and uh, see what happens. All right, so getting into the car, it's extremely evident that that radiator support is no longer, is definitely left to chat. Um, now that we're kind of here, you can kind of see some of the other damage. There's definitely no front ZR1 lip anymore. Uh, the more motor fog broke off its bracket. I can repair this, not a big deal. Um, and then this one lost a clip, so I just gotta find a way to get that to re-grab uh, on there safely. But I ordered a, uh, a lower radio support on Amazon. I didn't know it came in pieces. I'm gonna compare that to the factory one. I, I don't know how excited I am about adjusting the length of my radiator support like this. If that one's the same setup, then by all means I'll run it. But I thought it was just like one solid piece across. So I'm gonna take a look at that before I put this one on. I might have to wait for the parts and not really move forward with it today. Uh, but I, I'm hopeful that I can kind of use this setup if, if I can, so. I'm gonna, take a, I'm gonna get back under there, take a look, and see if we can get um, this thing taken apart. So I just do my iPhone here so you can kind of see, but this is my radiator sport. And it is completely snapped at the bracket up there. So it is a couple bolts. I believe my replacement one has come in. So I do gotta take this apart if I wanna move forward with this car and get it back on the road. So that's the goal right now. So there's clearly quite a bit of damage on the, the lower radiator support. Um, the lower tab for the radiator kind of seats on the uh, lower radiator support on the passenger side has broken. Um, I don't think it's broken to the point where the radiator is compromised, but the fact of it mounting is. So I'm gonna find, I'm gonna start with taking this car further apart. I'm gonna take the wheels off the car. I'm gonna take the front bumper off the car. Um, to give myself some more clearance, some more area to work with, uh, and then do this slowly and meticulously to make sure that, you know, not, n anything's not being overlooked. My goal with that lower radiator tab is to see if I can find something to hold in place if the radiator is confirmed not leaking. So I'll probably refill it with coolant and see if it drips out of that area there. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll find a way to kind of connect those two areas so it doesn't move or fall out. Uh, trying to avoid keep, you know, keeping the cost high of replacing the radiator. Um, if I have to replace a radiator, there's a one, I forget the name, I'll, I'll link it below, but it's like 350 bucks for an aluminum radiator, so a little bit better quality than the factory one, but uh, I'm, again, trying to keep the cost down so I can continue racing, don't want to have the car down for too much time, you know, because I feel like I'm building more momentum, driving and learning and, and pushing myself, obviously, pushed a little too hard, but uh, those things happen when you're out there, you assume those risks it's immediately when you get out on track. So I'm not mad at it. Um, I just wish it was a little less damage, but not a big deal. We're gonna start cleaning this thing up and we're gonna get it back on the road soon. So now that the bumper's off, you can kind of really see the extent of the damage. There's those brackets. Radiator support's completely snapped off. I, I wanna say this might have been already like at a failure point because again, I, I didn't come off track. At least it didn't feel right like that bad of a situation. But man, yeah, I, I shattered it in both places there. Um, and then this side is still pretty well on. But obviously, you know, this is one solid piece. So we're gonna start unscrewing this. I wanna just slowly piece these things off and match it to the new one. You know, it's got the horn and a couple of little plugs and stuff. Match that setup and then switch over to the new one um, and see how it all fits. 
as of right now, there's nothing else visibly damaged outside of this, which is what's allowed the radiator to kind of shift a bit. Um, so I'm optimistic that fix this, put that line on the top that I showed you, and we might be ready to rock and roll again. So like I've mentioned, and again, it's not like a disclaimer or anything, but I, I've had this car for a few months now, I mean, maybe six months now. And, and honestly, like I haven't really taken it apart to the point of like, let me see what every tie wrap goes to, what every wire goes to. I am taking advantage of the point now that I had to take the car apart again to, and I told myself, okay, let me organize a couple wires in the engine bay that are routing down to the HID lights and fogs and all that. And let me organize some of this. But the last time I was down here for the for the tow hook that I installed, I, I saw a lot of tie wraps and I'm like, you know what, this is an older car, it's been driven. Tie straps are the way to go for any pro mechanic. Well, I didn't actually break this on track. When the two bolts that mount up here, right, that hold this pretty much this uh, lower radiator support together up, up onto the frame, there was a tie wrap going through it so that this, the bolt was backed out, the tie strap was going through it on the other side. I don't know if I recorded it, if I did, I'll add it there. But I figured it was holding up maybe something else because there's a front camera here and all this, so maybe it was something related to that. The bracket was visibly broken when I went to unbolt the bolts, so I was like, okay, there's no reason why I need to support anything down here under the car because it's already not supported by the chassis of the car. And when I unscrewed the back one, the radiator support fell down further. Lo and behold, I don't know if it's going to be visible on camera, but this nice long tie wrap setup. Oh, here you can kind of see where it was wrapped around the bolt. This was holding my lower radio support up to the car. So again, ingenuity by a garage mechanic to keep this car together with tie wraps. But when you're going racing and you do the mis make the mistakes I make and you, you know, go off roading like I did, these tie wraps are not going to hold. Now I will say the tie wraps are still together. Um, I don't even think that this was actually um, caused or anything like that or if this even shifted when I went off road. It might have a little bit because it did hook the front splitter and pull it, um, but it might have shifted a little bit and we just noticed it now because we hyper focused on the fact that I hit the grass and I broke the lip and I had coolant leaking, which we naturally imagined that it would be coming from something on the bottom end of the car because that's the only thing that took impact when in reality, it was that top coolant holes in the top, which more than likely through the pressure of impact just finally gave out. And this was already like this um, from beforehand. So consider it a, uh, I'm gonna take this as a, as a little hidden blessing, right? Because I had the accident, um, well, you know, I went off track and I'm able to upgrade that coolant line to make sure that it doesn't pop at any point. And I'm actually able to catch this because I definitely don't want to be on track hitting 150 miles an hour with uh, you know, a vital component being held up by tie wraps. So um, the good news is I didn't break it. Bad news is I still got to replace it, but uh, uh, I'm just surprised to see how many tie straps were, were put there to kind of hold this car together. Um, and these are the kind of things when you buy a car that's been modified and stuff. And now I'm just rambling. So I'm going to get back to it. Um, start unbolting, like I said, I'm gonna match the sides because there's a couple things here. I wanna make sure that they align properly before I try to install that uh, Amazon radiator support on here. Let's go. So the lower radiator support is completely installed. It's actually pretty cool. Um, here are the pieces to the other one, right? Here's one completely broken off part. And like I said, it looks like this was broken from for a time now. This was basically what was holding the passenger side of the radiator support. You can kind of see there a couple tie straps to tie straps to tie straps to kind of hold this. Um, so. It actually worked out that this, uh, we assume that this was the cause of, you know, everything that happened that day. Um, because now I have, you know, much more sturdier setup down there. Radiator seems to be okay so far. Um, I'm reorganizing some of the wires. I'm gonna fix that intake hose up here. I'm gonna vacuum out whatever I can see dirt wise up here. Um, 
and then I'm gonna put some coolant in it and work on seeing if I can get it started and with the bumper off, be able to see if there's any visible leaks coming from there uh, before committing to put the bumper back on. But so far, so good. I'm happy with that Amazon one. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll drop the link in the bottom. So, I mean, in the bio or the description or whatever you call it. I'll drop the link in there so you guys can kind of check it out if you need it. It's not like a part that I would assume people are actively searching for, but um, I'll put it in there so in case you guys need it. And let's uh, let's move into the top of this thing, clean this thing out, um, see if the radiator um, can hold some water and go from there. So there's clearly still pieces in that side. This side's a little bit straight, more straightforward because I have the, the nipple still on the outside, but that one is on the inside of the hose. So I got a needle nose and then just a standard plier just so I can uh, get this, uh, this, this T out and put the new one in. So this right here is the culprit. This naturally has a quarter on this side and a 3 8 out on this side. It was so dry rotted that for this one, I actually just disconnected it from the steam port and pushed a screwdriver through uh, to make sure it's all clear on this side. Um, it kind of started coming apart, so I kind of shook it. Once it came apart, it all fell out the front. Um, but this is more than likely the culprit that kind of gave us a scare. Like I said, the radiator sport was broken previously to all this, and it just, you know, now we noticed it because of the situation that we were in. So I'm gonna put some water in it now and try to start it up. I might have to at least put the intake into place um, because there's no mass airflow. So yeah, put the intake on, start it up and uh, see. Not really worried about maintaining temperature yet because it's been disconnected for a week. There's more than likely air in the line, um, but it's more so if there's any leaks visible coming from the radiator, um, which I then at that point I would have to order a new radiator. Not seeing anything at all. Oh, got some water down here. All right, so I've ran it a couple times. It appears it's not leaking. I do see a fit, one of the fittings from the radiator. I think that's unrelated to it right now. I'm gonna tighten that. Um, but I don't see anything, so I'm gonna keep putting water in it. It just drank some of the water now, so I'm assuming some of the bubbles are getting out. Um, I'm gonna add water wetter to it water water to it um, I do run water just because I do use this to track purposes and they're not fond of coolant 
so i do run water in it and this just kind of helps with the temperature and kind of the uh the boiling point of water versus coolant so i'm going to add this in there add some more water into it run it again um and see if it'll maintain temperature well guys you win some and you lose some the radiator um can't really track down let me make it a little brighter for you guys i can't really track down where exactly the radiator is leaking but as you can see right there, that's a live puddle. I just wiped the floor a second ago, started the car, and the more throttle I gave to try to bleed it, uh, the more it, it spouts out. So looks like I'm going to be ordering a radiator this week, waiting for that to come in, and then getting back to the install when I have a chance. But oof, now I'm really bright. Here, to speed this up. So that's going to end it here. It's not really any progress I can make on the car at this point. Um, I do like the radiator support. I definitely feel like that's going to be an improvement just for safety purposes, not performance or anything like that. Um, I'm a little down. I was really hoping to get the car at least capable of driving. But the lip comes in on Tuesday. The radiator will come in in a couple weeks. I mean, in a couple days once I order it um, and I'll be back at it. I'm just going to leave the garage kind of as is for now. Um, and then I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure you like and subscribe. Um, it takes a lot of effort to kind of have the camera moving around doing all this stuff, but I enjoy it. I hope you guys are enjoying it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.